Automation, automation, automation. This is something that I really enjoy when it comes to using WordPress alongside a range of other tools. Now, WordPress itself, straight out of the box, has a lot of functionality, but it isn't great at talking to other tools, applications, services, those kinds of things. This is where we need tools that allow us to bridge that gap. Today, we're going to take a look at bit integrations. This is a free and premium plugin. It is also currently at the time of recording this video available on AppSumo. If you want the full package, link in the description. We'll take a look at that in a moment. However, for this example, I'm just going to show you the free version so you can test this out, see how to get started. And if you want to invest in opening up integrations with various different tools, maybe the premium version is going to be perfect for you. So what other kind of tools can we use to do a similar job? Well, obviously, the first one that comes to mind is Zapier or Zapier. You can use that to combine various different tools. But the key difference with this over a tool like Zapier or Zapier is this is integrated and built around WordPress integrations. It works inside WordPress itself. So let's take a look, first of all, at what we have and how it works. And also take a quick look at the AppSumo deal. OK, so I've all gone ahead and installed the free version. And with that, there's limited integrations. However, if we hop over to the bit integrations page on AppSumo, let's take a look at the plan on here. You can see with one code, you get access to five sites. So you can use this on five WordPress websites. If you want to stack more codes, you can get two codes for 50. Three codes give you 100 and four codes gives you unlimited sites. So if you have this something you want to use with clients, you want to open up that option, maybe the unlimited sites stacking for is worthwhile for you. However, plans start at $49 for five websites. There's no data limitations. You can see if you take a look at the link in the description, you'll see exactly what I'm seeing on screen right now. OK, so with that out of the way, bit integrations, what do we get? How does it work? Well, first of all, it connects up with a range of different form plugins. And this is the key kind of point for this. It works with forms in a lot of examples. So things like Bitform, which is their own custom WordPress form builder. But you can also use this with Contact Form 7, Gravity Forms. You can use it with Ninja Forms, those kinds of things. You can use it with webhooks. So that opens up even more possibilities. But you can also use it with Elementor Forms. So if you're an Elementor user and you want to connect things up, you can do that. Or in the example that we're going to use today, if you're using something like WooCommerce, and when something happens, like someone makes a purchase, etc., you want to do something else with it, this could be a great option, direct integrations inside there. But if we take a look at the third party applications or other WordPress plugins, you can see again, there's even more options available inside you. If you have bought something like InCharge from AppSumo in the past, that's supported. Google Sheets is supported. You've got things like MailChimp, MailPoet, those kinds of things. So there's a ton of options available. Some of these are going to be available in the pro version. Some of these are going to be available in the free version. OK, so with that out of the way, let's go ahead and take a look at how we get started. I've already gone ahead, installed everything and that's basically it. We're ready to go. You'll see we now have bit integrations on the left hand side. And if we open that up, we have two really simple tabs. We've got the integrations, which we'll take a look at in a moment. And we've got settings, which in this example is very, very straightforward and simple. Do you want to delete all the data if you remove the plugins? If you're testing this out and you want to delete it, you want to take all the data with you, your database and all those kinds of things. Love to see that option included. And then you can specify how many days the log is sort of stored on the server before it's removed. You can see you can set this up to a number of days. You can activate it and just insert the number of days you want. Good if you're using things like GDPR and you don't want to store any kind of data for longer than is necessary. So with that being said, what do we have under integrations? Well, let's open that up. You can see we've got a really simple setup, create an integration. So first of all, we're going to click on that. And this then opens up. What do we want to use as a trigger? Now, if you've ever seen any of my other videos on dealing with integrations, it's basically very simple. You have a trigger that causes something to happen, and then you have an action. So for example, trigger could be you sell a product on WooCommerce. The action is you want to add some details to a Google Sheets. You want to sign something up to a MailChimp mailing list, those kinds of things. So for our example, I've already gone ahead and installed and set up WooCommerce. So let's choose WooCommerce as our trigger. We'll choose that. You can see then what's the task you want this form to carry out. So let's expand that out. And you can see, depending upon the kind of tool that you use, you'll have different tasks to actually cause that trigger, you know, kind of thing. So you can say customer creator. So if someone creates a customer account, you may want to automatically subscribe them to a mailing list that's not supported straight out of the box at a tool like WooCommerce. And you want to do that. Like, for example, in charge, you could do it inside here. So let's just say we want to set this up so when a 
order is completed. So order create, you can see we also got things like product create, edit and delete. So you could be using this in conjunction with some back end kind of tools. You may have multiple people operating a site or you may have someone that manages the shop and you want to sort of like store information when they make changes. You can use this as the trigger. So we'll say order create. And then it says, OK, the next step, what happens when that trigger is actually actioned? Well, you can see that now opens up the integrations. Now, you can see a lot of these are premium, which you can't really blame them for, but they're giving you the ability to test things out. And like I said, with the AppSumo deal that's there right now, if this is something you're looking for, this could be a great option. But for this example, we're going to keep this simple and we're going to connect this up to a test MailChimp account that I have. So we'll choose MailChimp. You can see now this asks us for some information, and this is going to be very similar to whether you're using Zapier or Zapier or Integromat or Public Connect. Any of those kinds of tools are going to ask you for relative information, and this allows you then to connect your trigger up to the, the sort of the service that you want to link it to, whether that's Google Sheets, and in this example, it's MailChimp and so on. So you can see it gives us the homepage URL, the authorized redirect URLs. It's all pre-filled out. What we need is the client ID and the client secret. So now we've got to go ahead and set things up using MailChimp. Now, I've already created my app, set everything up inside there, but you can click on the MailChimp API console and find out how to actually recreate this. I don't want to go into any sort of a whole process when it comes to MailChimp because you may be using something completely different. Just want to show you the integrations. And this is very similar to most other tools you use to create things like integrations between websites, services, those kinds of things. So once we've done that, we're going to click on Authorize. Once that's confirmed, everything is set up and working. You can see now that's authorized successfully, and we've now created that connection between the two different services, our WooCommerce store and MailChimp. Now we can click on Next, and all we can do is we can select various different settings. So we can choose the audience if you have multiple audiences in the example. So you can see I can choose from any of mine. So I'm going to choose the WP Touch one. And if I want to, I can assign tags inside here as well. So if you're using tagging systems to group and organize your different customers, this could be, you know, you could set this and have a tag of customer and it's all set up. So you can use tags if you want to. Uh, we're going to select our fields so you can see I can choose to map the various different fields together. So you can see we can choose the form field and the select field. So we want to do things like maybe the, the name and so on. But for this example, we'll keep it really simple. We'll find the billing email address and we'll map that to the email address. You can also choose in this example how the actions work. So for example, do you want to add an address field? Apply double opt-in, which is generally good practice. And do you want to update MailChimp? So we'll say we want double opt-in, for example, and we'll click on Next. And there we go. We've now created an integration. So we can finish and save this. And we have now have one integration. We also have actions, which we can see info, edit, delete, and a timeline. So we can find information out from there. And we can also enable and disable this if we want to. So everything is set up. So now we can go ahead, test this out, and make sure everything works. OK, so I've added a couple of products to my cart. I've gone through the process now, and we're ready to go ahead and check out. So everything is in place. I'm going to click on Place Order. And our order has now been completed. So everything has been completed to make the whole process of buying something on the store. So now we can go back and check to make sure that everything is connected up, and that information has now been transferred over behind the scenes into the MailChimp account. Now, because I set up double opt-in, I've already gone ahead and replied to the email that was sent out to me asking me to confirm, and that has now confirmed my subscription. And if we take a look in MailChimp, you can see there's my subscribed status, my email is set up inside there, the time, all those kinds of things are set up. So that seamlessly happens in the background once someone actually creates a purchase and buys something. And that's just a really simple example of how you can get started using these integrations and automations that go on behind the scenes. If we hop over back into WordPress and back into our bit integration section. If we take a look inside there, we can see we now have the integration log, which shows us the status, which was successful. You can see the response, the time and the date of that particular integration, how that all went on in the background. So we can make sure that everything is working perfectly inside WordPress and we can check things out for ourselves inside the tools we're linking things up to. Now, this is a really simple starting example of how you can take these integrations and how you can make your whole chain of events so much simpler. 
Running an online store is not just a case of placing orders, taking orders, managing stock and so on. There's a lot more that goes into it. You want to keep in touch with your customer base. You want to be able to do various different things behind the scenes. You don't want to have to handle that manually. And that's where this kind of automation really does open up a ton of possibilities. I've been using this kind of thing myself an awful lot lately in various different ways. And I think it is definitely the future of how you actually integrate all your different sort of portions of your online store together or anything really doesn't have to be an online store. But as always, I would welcome your feedback. Do you like this kind of content? Would you like me to take a look at a little bit more detail into other options of how we can integrate and automate so many different parts of our entire sort of project cycle? Let me know in the comment section below. If you're interested in bit integrations, again, let me know. Have you picked this up? Have you tested it? What's your thoughts, your findings, and your reactions? I would love to know. As always, all the applicable links are in the description. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts, and until next time, take care. Thank you.